welcome to Robot Show, uh, the show where we talk about math and programming. I'm Hal, and this is Charge, my buddy over here. Uh, so let's jump straight in. Let's look at some letters from our viewers. Uh, let's just get this one down here. And uh, oh, this just looks like a picture of me getting struck by lightning. Um, well, let's, let's try a different one. Uh, let's come around, find this. So here we go. Okay. Uh, Dan from White Oak, Tennessee writes, How the f*** did you get your lame show on TV? It defies all logic. Well, that's a perfect segue, Dan, into our uh, topic of today. That's uh, First Order Logic. So what's all this logic stuff anyway? Well, uh, First Order Logic uh, comes from propositional calculus, and it's like, basically adds some quantifiers and some functions on top, but never mind all that. It's really just a way of, uh, you know, making sure statements are true or false. So, you know, look at all these symbols and stuff here, and it's kind of it's kind of intense, you know, a little scary, but we'll just kind of demystify it and go through what these symbols mean, and then by the end of this, you should be able to read this pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, so, uh, it's useful for proofs and white papers and stuff, but more importantly, you're starting to see it in type say, uh, systems, and uh, in everyday programming, you're using logic, right? So, uh, you can actually use some laws and, and properties to refactor your code to make easier to read logic, and we can find mechanical tools for this and such. Uh, so, uh, let's jump right in. So, we have this, this uh, conjunction, and conjunction here is basically and. You've already seen this before, you know, both sides should be true. If you're programmers, you know, it's true if they're, if they're both true. Uh, and here's the table here. Um, then we have disjunction. Disjunction is or, right? So not a big deal, same deal. You have uh, both sides have to be false. It's either or, right? So it's uh, false or, or true and everything else is true. Uh, so now we have this uh, negation. And negation is uh, actually just, you know, you've seen this not. Um, so this will just flip the bits from true to false and false to true. So, you know, um, then there's this, um, uh, this equivalence here. Equivalence is pretty cool. This is basically like equal, equal, uh, not, not anything new yet, you know, uh, so both, it's not exactly equal, equal, but you can implement it this way because both sides have to match, right? They're both true or both false and anything else doesn't, doesn't work out. Well, yeah, I know you know all this, but you know, it's, we're going to, that was review. Now we're going to get into some cooler stuff here. Um, so... We have this for all. It's pretty neat. It's the universal quantifier. And the universal quantifier says, you know, give me any any old thing, and this property should hold true for, for every possible thing out there. So uh, we could say everyone's a critic. If our, if our domain is people, every person is a critic here. It's just a function call. Um, we, here's something weird. We can say everyone's name is Steve, but that's not a true statement. I mean, my name isn't Steve, um, so that's false, right? That's not, that doesn't hold. Um, but more importantly, in our programs, we can do stuff like, say, for all X, uh, for all users in our system, say, uh, they have a name and have an ID. And that's just a guarantee of our system, right? That's, a, that's true for all our users. So let's look at some code. Okay, we're looking at some code here. We have some uh, users and some helper functions, name, ID, this glass family here. And we want to write this in code. For all X is glass family X. Okay, should be pretty easy. All we have to do is say users is our, our, all our users, um, every. And we take each user and we just say is glass family on it. And that should hold. That should be true. So let's just verify that. It's a result. Let's console.log our result here and, uh, and run it. And that is true. There we go. If we break it, if we you know pass, break somebody's last name to not be glass, it's, it's false. So nice and easy for all. Uh, so let's do this again um, with uh, the next thing down here. Just get rid of our result and just move it down below. And this one says, for all x, uh, we have a name and we have an ID. So again, we'll just say every user, users.every, x has name, x, and has ID, x. So this is how you'd see it in code. The math looks kind of kind of scary looking. Not really, though, once you see it applied in code here. And that should be true, and it is. OK, so now we have the existential quantifier. And this one's pretty neat. This one means there's something out there. Some, something exists for which the statement holds true. So we have this sum x out there for sum x. Uh, x times x equals x. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, the number one, right? It doesn't hold for every number. I can't just throw a number in there. Uh, it's not for all. But there exists sum x where that holds. Uh, and there's this, uh, here's, we can say there's a robot out there. Uh, there's, there's some, some X out there. There was a robot and a dimwit. <laughs> I can think of someone over there who this holds for, who holds true for. Okay. I'm just having fun with you. I'm just having a good time. All right. Well, uh, so one interesting thing here is, uh, the for all X and, uh, there exists some Y, uh, so where they have a soulmate. You can think of this as uh, people. If our domain is people, we can say, uh, you know, everybody for everybody, there's somebody out there who's their soulmate and all. And that's, that's kind of beautiful. Right. But then you go down to the, the next line and it's not the same thing. This one says there's someone out there where everyone else is their soulmate, right? There's, for someone, you know, every other person is their soulmate. So the order actually matters uh, in what it means there. Now let's jump in and look at the existential quantifier in the code. 
Okay, so we have some users here, and uh, our users are uh, from before, and we have this first name helper that just grabs the first name of the user. Uh, so let's do this first one. It says uh, there exists some user out there, some X, uh, where their first name is Zoe, okay? And of course we have Zoe right here, so let's just go ahead and write this in code. Uh, we have our users, some X, where their first name is equal to Zoe. And there we go, and, and that should be a true statement, right? Because we have one right there, there exists one. Uh, so let's just go ahead and console.log this. Console.log, right in line there. And we'll just do node 1a here. Uh, there it is, true, it's, it's true for that statement. If I if I get rid of Zoe there and run it again, it's a false statement. So uh, yeah, so now we know there exists some user with the name Zoe. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next one. Um, get rid of that console, it doesn't screw us up here. All right, this one says, uh, there is some x out there that for all other y's, x times that y equals that y. And of course that's number one, right? We'll say there's some x out there, the number one, where every other number times it gives that number back. So let's just express that. So let's, let's go ahead and just make some numbers here. And I know there's a, it's like an infinite array, um, but let's just go ahead and, and use this, this finite one to test this out and see how to write this in code. So we're gonna say, uh, let's see, nums, uh, some, there's some x out there where nums every, every other number uh, where x times y is equal to equal to y there. Okay, and hopefully this statement is true, or else all our math doesn't really work out from, from grade school. And oh, uh oh, it's not true. It's oh, uh, it's missing initialized. Forgot an equal sign. There we go. Little assignment. Okay, and there it is. True. Okay, so let's get into a little bit more heavy stuff, a little bit more interesting stuff you may have not seen. Um, so this is uh, implication, and uh, implication basically it works like a like a nested if. So uh, the left side, uh, if it's if it's true, we're going to go ahead and check the right side. Otherwise, we just don't even check the right side. It's just implied that it's true. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, so it says, uh, for all x here, if you're on the robot show, uh, that implies you're a robot, right? Uh, so and if you're not on the show, we won't even check that you're a robot. We'll just assume, uh, you know, things are good and the statement holds. Um, and here's another one, happy and you know it. You're probably clapping. That implies you're clapping. Uh, so, so that's a good one. Um, and so here's the truth uh, table here. So it kind of acts like a nested if, right? If the first part is true, we're actually going to check the second part. Um, otherwise, we're not. Um, so uh, to kind of demonstrate that, if you're happy and you know it, uh, it implies you're clapping, uh, you could be, all this could be true, right? You could actually be doing all this. Uh, but what if you weren't happy and you didn't know it, but you're still clapping, right? You're like at an emo concert or something, and you know, you're, they're just, they just finished their big hit and you're clapping, but you're not, you're not happy. So, uh, you know, it could be true. Um, we don't ever really look at it. So think of it as a nested if there. Um, so let's look at it in code. Okay, so we have some vids here, and we've got the robot show and the mediocre tech talk here, uh, and some helper functions. And here's our implication uh, function here. Um, and so let's go ahead and write this uh, out, and then and then we'll we'll circle back and look at this one. So for all x, if x is a show and x is the best, that implies it's the robot show. Okay, so let's write this out. Uh, so for all our vids, all our x is in our domain. Um, every, if it's a show and it's the best, right? It's a it's going to be the best. That implies implies that it is the robot show. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and assign this. Make sure it, uh, it's true. So let's console.log this result here. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're on. There we go. And that's a true statement. All right, that's great. If, uh, so uh, if we go up here and we say, well, you know, there's some conditions going on here, right? Is it a show? And is it the best? That implies it's the robot show. So if I go ahead and make this the best right here, and it's also a show, uh, that's gonna that's gonna have two best shows, right? And then our statement becomes false because it doesn't imply that. So let's do one more of this. Uh, so um, here's our implies again. Just have some players, and we say there is this some x out there uh, that's a Highlander, right? Uh, and for every other y, uh, if they're a Highlander, that implies they're the same same person. They're the same player, the same Highlander. So let's how do we write this out? We'll say okay for some some x out there, some player, uh, if they're the Highlander. Uh, so this just a just a property on X, Highlander, uh, and and for every other player, uh, why there? If they are the Highlander, um, then uh, we say that that implies that they are the same Highlander. So that's X is ID is equal equal to Y ID. We do that because of the equality. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, sign this. It's getting kind of long, but console.log this whole deal here, and if we run this one. Uh, it's a false statement, uh-oh, because we have two Highlanders. That's not good. So we have to make one false, and there we go, it's true. 
Okay, so hopefully that was a good intro. You can uh, maybe hopefully look at this slide again and think of it uh, a little bit easier and read these uh, wacky symbols. Uh, now let's just look at the top one here, uh, this equivalence. It says, if some property doesn't hold for all x's, uh, that's equivalent to saying there's some x out there for which the property doesn't hold. Um, and you can look at the rest of these, but we're going to do a follow-up episode, so stay tuned. Uh, and we'll go over how to manipulate and uh, refactor our, our, our logic to simplify our code. Catch you next time.